From years of anxiety to warrior and mentor, Bradley Robinson created the Anxiety Project to help you end your anxiety naturally. Let's mold the new you and let's end anxiety together. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Anxiety Project podcast. Welcome to episode 305, where we're talking about stress and the symptoms that accompany stress and that accompany generalized anxiety disorder, what makes up this disorder. And it's very confusing to people and it was very confusing to me um, because we can misinterpret all of our symptoms and sensations quite easily, right? Because the right hemisphere generalizes and it it comes to conclusions and it's very irrational, right? It just wants to hypothesize what's lurking in the unknown because your symptoms, yeah, it's, they're all unknown. You, you can't make sense of them. What it just seems to be is you're not well. And in a broad sense, that's correct. You're not well. Something's up. But because there's an unlimited amount of avenues to take, that's going to generate anxiety because there's too many paths in front of you. Obviously, you're going to be frozen like a rabbit or a deer in the headlights. Where the heck are you going to go? Which path is the correct path? And when, and what do you conclude from feeling the heart palpitations, the dizziness, the nausea, the constant worry and the extreme sensitization to the world around you, even to like cues, like the word cancer makes you one perk up because first their emotional glass is overflowing. There's, it's like, imagine you sweep everything under the rug, like every, everything that you know to be wrong, that, that you are so, what would you say? it's just so repetitive in your life. I mean, I'm talking about habits and behaviors and you, you, you sweep the problems under the rug and then they build up there and you wind up with an anxiety disorder because of the many snakes that are under the rug. And I, last episode, you're going to want to listen to that one if you haven't already. It's about time and how time awakens you. The snake in the Garden of Eden awakens us to, well, our vulnerabilities and, and our faults, right? And what happens is when we encounter the ultimate dragon, which is our mortality, which comes to be the case when you keep sweeping the snakes under the rug and you don't deal with all of these things. And then next thing you know, you're waking up at 2 a.m. in a cold sweat thinking, oh my God, what if I have a heart attack? Um, and what if I never get out of this glass case of emotion? I guess you, if you want to reference um, Anchorman. But we have to first understand that there are two patterns of stress because people that seek out help are dealing with too many complexities in their life. And the first pattern of stress is unpredictable stress, where they're going along in life and then something pops up and it, it's random. And when something random pops up, you don't know how to deal with that. And so like a deer, they deers jump randomly because, well, they need to be unpredictable in the face of something predatory because the predator it can't really track something that's random and so it's like you can't track something that's random because like you're unprepared and it's above your tolerance level and and this a sign that it's it's uh, the, the the stress that your body produces is in proportion to the complexity of the situation and so there's unpredictable stress that can come about randomly and, and, and it's extremed and you experience a prolonged heightened emotion because of that because it's too unknown, it's too foreign to you and you develop a sensitization. And then there's 
predictable stress, which is something that I had to learn to develop in order to desensitize myself from the anxiety disorder I was, I was contending with. And so you have to subject yourself to moderate amounts of stress and it, you, it has to be controllable, has to be planned. And then you build on this tolerance and the more prepared you are to deal with the stress of the day, the more you are able to contend with the random elements, the even more random elements. But you're going to find that a lot of the random elements of, of the day were, are, are things that you could have actually prepared yourself for, that you're just walking around in such a blind way. And I was, I was walking around very blind in my life. I was sleeping in, I was staying up late, you know, drinking alcohol late at night or ordering Chinese food late at night, you know, taking medications or like um, uh, uh, drugs, alcohol, and um, hanging out with dopey friends, avoiding work and responsibility. So my 20s were pretty, it was pretty much hedonism. And that proved to be a very bad idea because I developed an anxiety disorder as a consequence. Like in the previous episode, time awoken, awakened me. And, and what that means is, well, I realized I was in my late 20s. I realized that if I don't get a hold on this, if I don't figure this out, then I'm going to spend the rest of my life dealing with this. And it was a blessing that the anxiety disorder came about. And, and it's a blessing because I had to find a solution to it. There's, there's, there's no question about it. it. It was a torture fest. It was a complete nightmare. And so we're talking about symptoms today. And when you develop an anxiety disorder, your body is in an extreme heightened state of stress. Your sympathetic nervous system is active 24-7, especially at night when the lights go off and there's no one else and nothing else to distract you, to, to, to soothe you from, from the, the monsters lurking in the background. And then when, when night falls and you're trying to get to sleep, and if you do manage to fall asleep, what happens is the doors to your unconscious open up. And all those monsters that you've swept under the rug or you're trying to avoid will creep back in and it'll wake you up, especially when you hit deep levels of sleep because your brain is trying to process the unknown of, of waking life, right? It's, that's what dreams do and that's what sleep does is, well, one, sleep helps you to store um, memories, right? It, it helps you to just store um, what's important in, into the into into long term memories, and the other thing is your your mind is trying to make sense of what you can't really make, you you haven't made sense of in waking state, and so the problems of reality will creep in, and the things that um you haven't resolved will try and resolve themselves in in a dreamlike state. And if they're too overwhelming and they're too strong in negative emotion, they'll certainly wake you back up. And so another point to that, like one thing I learned, I know I'm going off in different directions here, but one thing I learned when resolving nightmares and you know resolving problems in general is to resolve them in waking state so if someone has a nightmare you get that person to close their eyes and go through the nightmare but then resolve it and that will generally 
heal them from that uncertainty and the nightmares won't come about ever again on that subject. And that's really interesting. You, you get them to explore that nightmare and resolve it. And that solves it. It's amazing. And so what really gets people is the symptoms because the symptoms are, get misinterpreted because anxiety produces a wide range of symptoms, including body aches and pains, like body zaps is a really, really big one that I couldn't, I couldn't really understand. It's funny because when I would focus my attention on like my kidney areas, like when it would there be an ache or pain there, um, that, that pain usually lingers on and on. And, and then after a while, when my emotional attachment would lessen over that particular area, another, I would target a different area of my body and then a pain would generate in that certain area. And it's amazing what the mind can do. And it, it could trick you into thinking that, well, you, this is a serious problem right, in that area. And the mind can really produce pains and aches, even though nothing is really wrong there. But also, I want to take it a little further, because if you've experienced trauma around, you know, maybe an event happened to you around a particular part of your body, the the trauma could be living in that area. So the pain, it's not necessarily like there's a serious illness there, but the trauma is producing the pain. And once you resolve the trauma, you'll resolve the pain. So there's another thing there that I want you to keep at the back of your mind. But other symptoms around anxiety include, well, headaches, um, just overall sense of dread and a constant worry, catastrophizing produces, well, just a heightened state of awareness. You're constantly, um, you're fatigued and you feel drained emotionally. There's an interesting word here called anhedonia, which is, I guess, emotionless, emotionless, Right, you you don't you're feeling numb. You're feeling like you you just don't have any lust for life. You you're feeling completely numb to the world around you. You're completely drained of all feelings. And also another thing to remember is anhedonia is related to depression as well. And depression and anxiety go hand in hand. Now, the great Robert. Sapolsky, who's um, a neuroscientist and um, he's a primatologist. He's a very interesting um, academic that I highly recommend you read about and listen to. He talks about anxiety and depression, how they're co-related and depression being more of like this fire blanket that is thrown on anxiety. Right, because your anxiety is being stuck in this hyper awareness. You're you're alert, and you're you're hyper vigilant, and then you experience this depression afterwards. And what that is is the depression is well, what depression is is you're in this corner and you fe- you see no way out of this right because anxiety at first is like i'm in the unknown uh, what you're in this hyper vigilant state and then after a while you're like well i'm i'm not getting out of this and i don't know where to go and i it things are hopeless and pointless and things really uh, get going from there in, in a very um dark way you know the the lack of meaning and the hopelessness is really not good. 
And then other symptoms around anxiety include depersonalization, which goes along with the anhedonia. Depersonalization is feeling like you're not in control of your body. You don't really know who you are. Um, You can't control the words that are coming out of your mouth. Even when you're walking, you feel out of control. You feel like your body is taking on a mind of its own and the world is tilting uh, from under you and you feel a strong lack of emotion, right? That's the anhedonia. And then the, the most common symptom of all is the heart palpitations. And a lot of people that I talk to, a lot of people that come to me for help, they, they say that the, the heart palpitations is the one that gets them. And what gets them is the, the feeling of having a heart attack. And no wonder because anxiety, you know, produces a lot of adrenaline and cortisol within the body and it raises the heartbeat and and the perspiration heightens. And, well, you understand, right? Because your body is preparing itself to fight, freeze, and flee. It's preparing itself for the unknown. So your reaction of concern is an indicator that you are in need of understanding the unknown, right? You need to understand what is going on. And like chimpanzees, who are hyper-focused on the snake that is slithered into their territory to master what has not yet to be mastered is what you need to do is you need to look towards the things that you're uncertain of, right? And and the anxiety, like the, the reason why I love doing these episodes about symptoms and sensations is because it opens up so many people's eyes. I remember, I remember what it was like for me to go through my anxiety disorder. I thought, I had medical problems. And then once I found someone online who was talking about these symptoms and its relationship to anxiety, I thought, oh my God, I have a label. Like these aren't just these illnesses that I need to attend to right here and now. I need to resolve this. But it's more like, well, I've, I caused this by my own lifestyle. Like I have more control over this than I think I do. And I needed to open a door to make changes in my life. And that was a relief to me, even though I had a long, long way to go. And, you know, I I felt relieved that that I I actually found some answers. And I hope that this episode speaks to you in that same way. How do you solve the problem of this uncontrollable unknown lurking within you? You can't control it. It, 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 it like there's so much in inside of you that's overwhelmed because you don't feel well, right? You don't feel well. Is this a sign that it could do me in? In the future? Well, learn about heart palpitations. Learn about the symptoms that you're going through. That's why you're here, and that's what we're doing today. Rule out anything concerning by going to the doctor. You know, first, you know, if you go to your doctor and you have a pain in your side that you're ruminating about, just know, understand that if, if, you're bouncing around different areas of body. If you're, if you're looking at certain moles and freckles in a very uh, sensitized way or your gums, your eyes, um, the veins in your eyes, very common. Or if you're like scanning for lumps or if you're constantly checking your urine, um, privates, very common, then that's clear and a clear indication that you are suffering from health anxiety uh, the obsession over one's 
held. And you have to also track it when that first came about for you. Like when did this health anxiety arise? Did something happen in your life to activate this over hyper awareness? And like in the previous episode, you know, time, the snake awakens you to the fact that you're a mortal creature and that you have to solve the problem of problems itself. That the fact that there are problems, that the world is filled with uncertainty, that we are just mortal, fallible creatures. It's and 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 to transcend that is what we need to do. We need to adopt a healthy, strong identity in order to buttress ourselves from the ocean of chaos are all around us. It, there is a vast ocean. And if we're not doing what we can every day to be strong, healthy individuals, then we're susceptible to the, the chaos right around us. And, you know, it's going to pop up and that unpredictable chaos is going to take you out. It's going to take you out. But so the more you explore, remember the the two patterns of stress, the more you explore stress itself, the more you're going to solve the fact that there are unpredictable stressors in life, right? They're not going to be so overwhelming. And also, who knows how much chaos you can avoid if you're being better than you are every single day of your life. If you're getting exercise, you're eating well, you're sleeping well, you're really taking care of yourself. You really like you, you you're taking care of yourself like you actually give a damn about who you are. Then who knows how much illnesses and problems you could actually avoid. Like I I just don't know over the past 6 7 years of my life who knows how many illnesses or situations that I avoided just because I decided to make so many life changes? Who knows how worse my life would have been? You know, it's kind of interesting to think about. It's very interesting. But you want to know the two biggest factors for heart palpitations panic attacks and stress are the two biggest causes. Yeah, because you're so hyper alert, you're going to have heart palpitation. And what's common is that the doctor says you are fine and yet the palpitations arise later that day and you feel trapped with this internal snake within you. It's like, what is that thing? You can't control the palpitations and it's driving you crazy. But the root needs to be dealt with rather than the palpitation per se right? The stress, the stress needs to be dealt with because health anxiety becomes a vicious cycle. Stress causes unknown body sensations that are uncomfortable, that causes panic. You fall on an external crutch, which only relieves anxiety for the moment. But when the stress returns, so does the sensation, which again produces the fear. Then Next thing you know, you're avoiding places that make you feel trapped away from emergency personnel and where you feel judged by other people. Now, if you're struggling with panic attacks per se, I want you to listen to episode 222. It's a one, two, three guide to panic. Episode 222. And I want you to keep whatever episodes resonate with you keep them in your back pocket and pull them out when you think that i I really need to hear this right now and if you're listening to this at 2 a.m beautiful i hope that you find this comforting because that's what i used to do i used to put on these kinds of podcasts when i would wake up in a panic state at 3 a.m where i couldn't sleep And these really help. So if you need this at a certain time of your day, take advantage of this. 
listen religiously because it'll change your life. Now, what improves anxiety symptoms? Well, the first thing is if you just go out into the world and you confront what's plaguing you, well, that, first, that's really important. So in that episode 222, I talk about confronting panic. So places that make you feel trapped and judged by other people, go into these places and ride the wave of panic. Because what you're going to find is you get braver in that situation and all other situations like it. If you pick one place, it bleeds out, it generalizes. So, so some people say, well, you know, Brad, um, it, I, I'm, I'm having trouble on the bus, right? I'm getting panic on the bus. So, so does that mean, you know, once I resolve the bus, I got to take care of, say, the elevator or then the airplane or then the 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 board meeting at my job, whatever it is, right? And then I'm saying, well, don't think too much about it. Don't overthink it. What's important to know is that once you get braver on that bus, you just focus on one area of your life where you're having panic. That bravery generalizes to all other areas where you feel you feel fearful. It generalizes that is huge. Once I learned that, I couldn't. I I I felt more confident. I felt like yes, I, you know. I, it it doesn't make it seem that complicated once you know that information. It's amazing. So yeah, once you start to get braver, uh, <clears throat> well, you you're going to feel less less anxious, obviously, because you're braver, you feel more competent, and, and you feel like you, you don't have to rely on your home to keep you safe, you can actually go out into the world and face your fears. And that's huge. And then there's things that you can do to, well, like lifestyle choices that can improve your anxiety, like going on a strict ketogenic low carb diet universally true to be helpful with anxiety and mental health you know animal based low carb diet uh, and drinking electrolytes like keto chow minerals not a sponsor but i just love them very good they're like they're drops where you can put in your coffee and tea and they have it has magnesium potassium and that's another thing too is we don't realize that we may need more magnesium before, you know, especially before bed, to help with heart palpitations. We may not realize that we need, we're lacking certain nutrients, and that's what's causing anxiety. And that's a big thing because I get clients come to me who come to me and they, they say, you know, I'm doing everything, you know, I'm, meditating this and that but I just don't feel well I don't feel well at the end of the day and there's only so much you can do you know via like cold showers or meditation there's only so much you can do to really help yourself but if you're not tackling kind of the, you know the basic necessities of what your body needs like the nutrients and the vitamins that you need then how do you expect to really get to the next level right you're, you're just not gonna your body's not feeling well for a reason so it's it's a lot of trial and error so you know just adding some electrolytes into your diet little bits at a time to see how you feel it's really this and it's an experiment experimental process and another thing I recommend, especially at night, is writing out your to-dos and in your worries. If your mind is overwhelmed, writing down your concerns that are on your mind will help lessen the anxiety. It's like Voldemort, right? Sure, fine, don't speak his name, but the fear around the name is going to grow and grow, right? It's going to plague you even more. So shining a light on what you don't want to attend to 
is what's necessary in order to minimize the weight of that fear. So you want to write down everything, ne negative thoughts that's plaguing you. Very, very important. Very important. And it also show, it shows your own self that you're not afraid to shine a light on, on you know, the, the word cancer or the, the, the stress lurking within your own mind. And then, you know, separate yourself from TV and the phone, especially at night. I just don't look. Like this week, I had a... And I'm still overcoming this fever. And I'm sure you can tell by my voice. And I was up one day this week from 12.30 and onwards. Like I was just up from 12.30. And I, I, I had a headache at night. I was literally, I took a bath. I was like sitting by the toilet all night long. I didn't go, I didn't watch TV. I didn't put on anything. It was just silent. I was just on the floor of the bathroom all night long. I just that's just how I am. I I don't go on my phone. I just I I don't go on the TV. That is not an option for me. And so separating yourself from the TV and the phone, it's a great way to connect with your own mind. Even though if you don't want to, all the better to connect with it. So go for exercise, go out for exercise, it, whether it's a walk or a gym workout, you have to move your body. Our bodies are meant to move. I don't care what kind of diet you're on. You know, you could be on the best diet in the world. If you're not moving your body, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. And then I want you to spend some quality time with yourself before bed, you know, have some tea, light some incense, have a nice bath, listen to something, pray, uh, meditate, do something to unwind, dim the lights, especially no stimuli, and give back to yourself. And then also I recommend that you listen to videos and podcasts about self-improvement and specifically about the fears that are plaguing you. There's so many podcasts out there Then I hope you incorporate this one into your routine as well. And I think that's a great place to conclude this episode. I guess before, though, I leave, I want to just highlight other symptoms. Like... Uh, some ones that I haven't touched on today that you need to know about, which are related to anxiety, like hyperventilation. So sh shallow breathing, for example, muscles need the oxygen for a quick response. Rapid heartbeat, blood is flowing to the brain and limbs. Also adrenaline for the re reflex response. Nausea, huge with anxiety, stress hormones alter food digestion, muscle tension can elicit nausea, sweating, I talked about that today, feeling out of control because the amygdala takes over, constant urination or bowel movements, that, that was huge for me during anxiety. I was always running to the bathroom. Um, I was all in also I was using the bathroom as an excuse to get out of situations I didn't want to be in, especially at work and and talking to other people at work. I wanted to be left alone so I could try and figure out my bloody uh, you know problems and my sensations and yeah body zaps which I talked about and body zaps, you know the muscles um, throughout the body tighten up because you have to remember your body is so tight. It's just, it's just jacked up to the max. And, and lastly, I want you to avoid Dr. Google, Dr. Google, because Dr. Google is a black hole of information. It just goes on and on and on and on. And remember what I said at the beginning of this episode, too many pathways in front of you 
is going to lead you to a lot of anxiety. Just, just, there's too much in front of you. How are you going to figure that out? And Google certainly does that to you. Is it's going to present to you not only with all of these different pathways, but also the worst case scenarios. And you're going to believe the worst case scenarios because that's what the mind is going to do. It's going to jump on the worst case. Why does it do that? Why does the mind go to the worst case? Because it wants, I think the mind just wants to, it it expects, because because you're already, you're, you're, you're emotionally filled, right? You're, the glass is overflowing. And since you're emotionally filled, you're, you're going to just assume that because of how you're feeling and the, and the overwhelming feelings that you're feeling are associated with the cancer or your victim mindset is going to attract itself to the ultimate dragon. That's what is going to happen. So the cancer, tumors, disease, this, I know, whatever, your your brain is going to go, yeah, that's me. I have that. Um, I'm going to die from that. I need help. And then you're going to tell your doctor or you're going to tell your folks and family and your loved ones that, you are, you're um, doomed for eternity and that um, you're this victim-like character. And it's no joke, man, because I was in that boat for a long time. It's not a fun place to be. And I hope that these episodes will steer you clear of the dependent victim mentality that we all fall into, which I did as well. And it's no shame in that because we all wind up there and it's about getting up and moving forward from there. And that's where I'm going to leave you on this podcast episode. Thank you everyone for being here, for being a listener and being a supporter of this show. Rise above anxiety. And I'll see you next time. My Anxiety Recovery Program is available over at UnplugAnxiety.com. With the Know Your Brain audiobook, you will learn about the inner workings of your anxiety system. This will help you to better understand why you feel detached and out of control from this ancient brain structure. That's at UnplugAnxiety.com. Go there to learn more.